Welcome back to the channel. Now there's one thing that people often get wrong and I always get questioned about it. Why is Rolex or in fact any other brand charging more for a cheaper material than its more expensive counterpart? And whilst the answer is very simple, it's also a very complex subject. But once you understand why, you'll always remember it and you'll never ever wonder again. And that is exactly what we're discussing today. Why do these brands charge more money for a cheaper material than its more expensive counterpart on any model that they produce? Just before we start, I did a community post asking you for your questions for uh, next uh, week's Q&A. And um, if you haven't seen that, just feel free to put your question in the comment section below and I'll make sure to include it in next week's video. And if it's interesting enough, I'll dedicate a specific video about it just like I'm doing now. This video was basically generated by a question that was asked on my last week's video about the Yachtmaster Titanium uh, 42 mil. Somebody asked, why is Rolex charging more money for that Titanium Yachtmaster at £12,350 than the stainless steel one? And I think it's a very valid question and it led to a very interesting video. Well, let's start with one of the perfect examples and the perfect candidate, and that is the Daytona. The Daytona has been made in multiple metals, whether it's steel, steel and gold, um, gold and platinum. So um, I thought it would be probably the best one to show you. And I'm gonna take you through the Rolex website here and show you some retail prices. So uh, let's get rid of me so you can see the prices. As you can see here, you've got the stainless steel one going for 13,200 and the yellow gold one going for 36,100 and a huge jump to 66,800 pounds for the platinum. Now, anybody watching this will say, I can understand why the gold version of this watch is a lot more expensive than the stainless steel version. In fact, it's almost three times more expensive. But then you'll say to yourself, okay, well, it's made out of fully precious metal and um, I can understand where the money's going. Fair enough. But why is there such a huge difference between the gold one and the platinum one when platinum at many times is actually a little bit cheaper than gold. Here is where it confuses many people and here is your simple answer and I promise you, you will never have to think about this ever again. Two reasons, model and workmanship. If Rolex was to use and produce less of a certain material, it's usually going to make that a more exclusive model. Simple, they produce less platinum watches than they do of anything else. So that covers the model. When it comes to material and workmanship on that material, that's the huge part of it. Gold and platinum have absolutely two different, very distinctive characteristics about them. When you're working with gold, it happens to be a lot easier. Whilst platinum is a pure metal and is actually softer and easier to mold, what you don't realize is being a very soft material actually makes it a little bit harder to work with. Gold is 75% pure, they use 18 karat gold, but platinum is close, very close to 100% pure soft metal. And in fact, it's 95% pure soft metal. And the difference is, and you've got to have a fair bit of experience working with both metals to actually start to see and understand. And over the years, I've handled so many watches and I've seen good polishing jobs and bad polishing jobs. And you learn it the hard way. When you polish gold watches, what happens is a little bit of gold dust comes off the surface. Now, not to scare you, you can polish a whole watch and lose a gram or less than a gram. It's not drastic. And you can polish a watch many times over the years and still have it look very close to a factory finish if the person that is working on it is very professional. Now, let's not divert off the subject. So when you polish gold, you get a little bit of gold dust coming off the surface. When you polish platinum, platinum is so soft, it doesn't just come off exactly how it happens with gold. It actually drags. If you try to polish platinum in exactly the same way that you polish gold, what you will find is you're left with drag lines. And this is why you should be very careful who you give your watches to to polish. 
I see people saying, oh, I can get my watch polished for £50 or £100. Fair, you do whatever pleases you. I would only give, especially um, very expensive watches to very experienced people. Otherwise, it will end up costing you a lot more. It's harder to refinish a bad job than it is to do the job just right from the first time. Anyways, going back to platinum. When you polish platinum, what tends to happen is you're actually dragging it if you're polishing it wrong and you end up with these especially on the high polish you end up with little lines showing down the center like for example if we were to just go back to the rolex website here and if you were to look at the center of the bracelet there you can see that it's high polish it will be less evident on the brushed finish on the side but on the high polish you will see streaks little streaks and that's a sign of a very bad polishing job and that is really the difference between working with platinum and working with gold. Gold is fairly simple, straightforward. In fact, you can get um, you can use polishing cloths to get rid of very minute surface scratching on the on the gold. You can't really do that with platinum because you will create drag lines. It takes a lot more work, precision, experience to work with platinum than it is to work with gold and workmanship is something that you're going to pay for how much rolex spends how much time rolex spends or ap spends or whatever the brand spends on working on a watch is exactly what you're paying for you could also say things about you know diamond set watches um why rolex um charge more for a princess cut bezel than they do for a round cut bezel when a round cut originally is actually a more ex expensive cut fancy cut diamonds and i know the word fancy makes them sound well special and fancy but i study diamonds and i understand diamonds very very well fancy cuts were created as a weight saving measure it was a way to get maximum weight out of a stone that has inclusions in in awkward places and if cutting it into a round cut would lose you a lot of weight they will try to do like a heart shape or a princess cut or or a baguette or anything that would keep and retain as much weight from the diamond as possible nowadays you can scan a rough diamond through a computer and it will tell you the best shapes and you know to maintain as much weight as possible it will tell you the best shapes and where to cut from in order to achieve that um but just going back to subject that cut is cheaper than the brilliant cut the brilliant cut is one of the most expensive because it sparkles the best it looks the best and wastes the most of the original rough stone so you end up paying for that wastage nothing goes unpaid for when it comes to material and how long something takes but why does rolex charge more than for the baguette or the princess cut then it goes back to my first point model so sometimes you're paying more because of the model and the fact that they don't produce it a lot so when they go out of their way and produce it they're going to charge you for it it's a fairly exclusive model that they're making but in majority of cases when you've got two watches that look exactly the same and there's nothing different in the model and it's just material and the material that they're charging more is actually a cheaper material it comes down to workmanship and how long it takes to produce that watch i wish i can show you a few examples of bad jobs on a platinum watch but i don't use bad watchmakers and i don't use bad polishers so i don't have an example for you to hand but i promise you it's visible to the naked eye and i'm pretty sure some of you have seen these platinum watches that have like little streak lines going down the high polish and when i say streak lines i don't actually mean surface hairlines because surface hairlines could occur on any watch including a brand new unpolished um, white gold or yellow gold watch but i'm talking about actual little drag lines in the actual metal so it's like kind of indented in the metal it looks like the little wrinkles you have on your fingers so um those are a result of a bad job less experienced person working on that watch and that is exactly what you're paying for and if you go to any good watchmaker or a watch polisher they should charge you more for polishing a platinum watch than they do a white gold watch ours certainly does 
and many watchmakers I know will charge a little bit more for platinum than they do for the white and yellow gold and the reason is because they spend more time doing the job and it's a lot more responsibility to hand now if you do have further questions about the subject please pop your questions through in the comments section i'll be reading all the comments and replying to any questions you have and as usual if something pops up that is really interesting i will include it in a separate video of its own and don't forget about next week's q a make sure to pop your question below and i'll include it in next week's video in the meantime take care and see you in the next one.